Rumours by Fleetwood Mac. Um, it is 11 songs, 39 minutes long, and 39 minutes and 58 seconds long. You know, the mathematician that I am, I'm just going to round that out to 40 minutes. Is that okay yeah, with you? That's fine. Perfect. It was released on February 4th, 1977. The oldest album we've reviewed on this podcast? Possibly. No, when was Marvin Gaye's one? Marvin Gaye? 74, yeah. Good, good, good. Look at that. Mm. Good, good knowledge. Come on, man. I'm awake. Why are we doing rumours by Fleetwood Mac? Well, the reason we're doing rumours by Fleetwood Mac is because many moons ago on this podcast, we had an episode called Rolling Stone. You can find it on Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever you get your podcast from, um, called Rolling Stone, where we reviewed Rolling Stone's list the 500 greatest albums of all time. And at number seven was Fleetwood Mac's rumours. And at the time, one of the critiques that Raheem specifically had of this album and its placement in the top 10 is that he said, if you're a top 10 album of all time, even if I haven't listened to you, I should know at least one song off that album. And at the time you said you didn't. Am I mm-hmm. getting your words correct, sir? You're 100% correct. So since that moment, that al- that pro- that project that podcast <laughs> is a project, mm. to be fair. that mm. podcast um has been listened to by a lot of people in my life personally i don't know about this for you and a lot of them and i use that podcast as an example a lot of the time actually and a lot of them will come back to me and say you haven't heard of fleet with mac you paul have you not heard of fleet with mac and i say <laughs> hey, i've heard of them i just haven't had a song i haven't mm-hmm. heard a song of that album they're like well, which album is that it's like rumors oh my god you have to how can you not blah 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 and here was me thinking Am I off base? Mm. What's going on? Mm -hmm. Um, And so in the months and years since that specific episode, Rolling Stone, I've realized that actually I did know a couple of the songs off this album, one. And two, I did know a lot more songs by Fleetwood Mac than I realized at the time, but I just didn't know that they were Fleetwood Mac. So as time has gone on, I've realized, oh shit, this is Fleetwood Mac, that's dope. Mm -hmm. So I thought with that, it's time to bring Fleetwood Mac rumors to the red to the red table um (laughs) but jay didn't answer our phone calls so that's what i said so because of that we thought let's just do it here you know what i said um so i felt let's start off the year with well not obviously starting off the year but as we're beginning this year and we've got free space in the calendar Mm -hmm. let's do it with a bang so let's stray outside our comfort zone let's do an album which we both we didn't ridicule the album we ridiculed the album's placement and let's see if it warrants its seventh greatest album of all time and all the accolades that obviously I just read off um, before I started this segment. So before, you know, we fully get into it, just to kick to you, like going through this album, were there songs on this album that you realised, oh, you have actually heard um, before? Yeah, there was uh, at least three, at yeah. least three songs where I was like, oh, yeah, shit, this is, I'm like, cool. Um, Don't stop. Some... Yeah, don't stop. Go your own way. Go your own way and the chain. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Completely that. Same through. Yep. Um, it was one of those. I was, I was similar to you in that I found out soon after, actually, soon after we did that episode, that there were a few Fleetwood Mac songs I knew. Just because, and I think it's funny, it's like, um, how can I put it? Songs that I originally, like, knew it just never stood out that their name was Fleetwood Mac to me because I didn't, that wasn't the name I was looking out for. Yeah. After that, every time I saw the name Fleetwood Mac, I was like, oh shit, I, yeah. maybe I was harsh. <laughs> maybe, I, maybe I should have not gone as in on that one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a few more Fleetwood Mac songs out there that I do know. Um, so listening to this album finally, it was fun. It was fun in terms of, all right, cool, let's actually, let's see, let's see if they deserved that not hate because we didn't hate on them let's see let's see if we were harsh in saying that they didn't belong in the top 10 yeah i'm mm. i'm i'm right there i'm similar the exact same experience so for me it was really like what when i knew we were going to do this was a long time ago um was like sometime last year obviously you watch a lot of american sports too so you'll have this like when they cut to adverts there's one specific advert that they had throughout sort of last season well last year and last season especially baseball it was for Mm -hmm. I I remember it so vividly it was for a Hyundai um new Hyundai um four by four and you know Terrence J from 106 and part back in the day he was part of this advert right and so there's loads of different people getting into this car and putting on the radio and -hmm. the song on the radio is everywhere um really nice song a song I've always heard and I liked it um 
It's like, I want to be with you everywhere. Like, that's the hook. And it's a really good, feel mm-hmm. good song. And I was like, I kept hearing, I was like, yo, what, who, who is this? Why don't I know this? Like, I know this song. Why don't I know who sings this? So let me search it. Spotify it. Lo and behold, it's Fleetwood Mac. I said, yeah, this is, this is, I love this song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These things is everywhere. <laughs> These things is everywhere. So I said, we've got to bring them to the, we've got to bring them to the pod. So obviously, Rumours being the album that was ranked as the seventh greatest album of all time by Rolling Stone. Um, widely considered in the research that I did. Don't worry, I did the research because I know you wouldn't. Um, Mm -hmm. widely considered to be sort of their best album and definitely as I mentioned the album that propelled them into the superstardom that they now still have decades decades later and 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 led to the sort of revered reverence that that they have but now it's time to see if they can you know pass the two stubborn Nigerians albums go yep it's time so let's kick it off before we, before I kick to you, I'm just gonna provide some context mm-hmm. again because I know there's some research that I think is important to this album, which I have a feeling you won't have done. Correct okay. me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. These niggas was all in relationships with one another. Oh, inside Fleetwood Mac. Okay. And that dynamic plays a part not just in this album but throughout their music. Is the relationships they were having with one another and the cheating that they were doing on one another also. The lack of respect they had for one another also and the infighting that they had um, plays a part in a lot of this. I believe this is, so Stevie Nicks, um, sort of the, one of the lead writers and female singers in the group. She's the woman on the cover. I believe this was her first album with the group. They had had many more albums before this, but I think this is the first one since she joined the group. And again, it was part of what propelled them into that superstardom. And you see some of the issues that she was facing plastered throughout this album. So with that bed for context, take me through your thoughts, especially around the themes and what stood out for you. It's funny you say that because... I definitely picked up on, I didn't pick up on it being um, so close to home in terms of the story that I was hearing, but I did pick up on the fact that they were seemingly telling different sides of the same story. Um, So I picked up on at least songs one to the chain. Um, There seemed to be like a consistent story of what was, what seemed to be a messy breakup. You know, song one, secondhand news, there's a relationship that's just clearly ending, even though one side, one person wants that relationship that's ending not to necessarily mean that, oh, okay, we're done with each other now. Like, he still wants, like, he just wants to take a break almost. It it reminded me a lot of um, Friends, the Rachel um, Ross dynamic in terms of, all right, cool. Let's just take a break. Let's not end this all the way. Cool. Second song comes in. Now, nah, if you are done, then then be done. Like there's no there's no second hand. Blah blah blah. There's no second chances here. There's no breaks. We're we're done. We're finished. Cool. Relationship ends. Third song. Hey, she said the relationship ended, but we're still doing our thing. Like this is we're still having fun. We're doing what we're doing. I won. You know, I'm the winner in this situation. Cool. Fourth song comes in now, and it's like. The don't stop comes in and is realizing, yo, you know what, yeah, this break might not be the healthiest situation. Cool. We go into go your own way now. You know what, yeah. You go your like we're done. Like let's actually let's split up, split up, despite what we started with. Cool. Move on. Some bird. They're contemplating taking them back. Um, I wrote specifically, they contemplate taking them back after all the drama, but since she, since that drama has taken place, she's outgrown him, and despite loving him, she needs to love herself first. Is the vibe I got from that song. Then after that, we go into the chain, and this is where, again, Scissors really set the tone for this year because <laughs> he really just doesn't. He refuses to hold the L. He refuses. He's like, nah, damn you, damn your lies, damn your love. If you're not gonna love me how I need to be loved, then there's no more love. Like, let's not let's not play games about you love me, but you don't love me enough. Like, blah blah blah. Let's like move on for real. And I thought the story that they told from one to the chain 
I loved it. I really, really enjoyed it. My confusion came after the chain, where it's like, <laughs> what's going on? You just told a really succinct story, and now we're going back into happiness and love and everything. It doesn't make sense following that. Um, <laughs> yo. Can I interject and provide yeah. a bit more context? Mm-hmm. This is before the age of CDs. Right. This is all LPs and vinyls. Okay. So the chain is the start of side B. So although right. it's the, although it is the exact same album, mm-hmm. and so I don't you don't need to change your critique just to provide some context for what they might have been thinking. You would have literally had to pick up your vinyl, flip it to the other side, put it down, and press play again. And so it's almost like you've literally played side A, and now yeah. you're getting the side B. Right. But continue. It changes things a bit, but still, that was where. It lost me. The whole album kind of lost me at that point because it was like, man, I've been watching this like really entertaining story and I was excited that there was more installations into the story when I was looking at how many songs were left. But it just, it never really gained that same momentum that one to six gained for me of that like succinct ending of this relationship. That was a really nicely told story. And then we get into this next part, and it's it's not the same. It's not the same. Even when it's trying to tell a story, but it's not gripping me the same way. It's not hitting the same notes. It's just it's not as good. It's not as entertaining. It's not as it's not as good. It's not as good. Period. Um, but the theme from the first half of it, yeah, yeah, they had me one to six. Great storytelling. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Um, and, and I understand your feelings there completely. I think um, it's really interesting, especially in that first sort of half of the album, how it's like the male voices are upbeat and the female voices are downtrodden. So mm. like um, secondhand news, um, go your own way. But to an extent, oh, don't stop as well, where we're really getting these male voices come through and almost shed their side. They're almost upbeat about it, even though they're still downtrodden, like on... um. um or something about go your own way like he's very much like he's you know he's saying he's over it but he's saying fuck you like he's it's toxic in his bag whereas the female voices in dream songbird like they're a lot more downtrodden um in in the way in which they get their feelings and thoughts and feelings across um i'm with you the chain does represent um a a shift in the dynamic almost and we get some different feelings. And, and I think that they're, they're addressing different themes towards that back end as well. So like Gold Dust Woman that closes out the album is more about, well, it's not even more about, it's about, you know, battling addiction and mm. cocaine addiction. That's what the Gold Dust is. You know, it's the Pablo Escobar, you know, the white girl, you know, which is ironic because <laughs> it's white women. You know mm. what I'm saying? What is it when white, it's white, look at white and white crime. Um, <laughs> but um so it's about addiction in that sense. And so the dynamic is a lot different. Um, mm. And I think, you know, not to say it shouldn't be on there. It does provide a different, you know, theme and a different aspect that she's, that they're touching upon. But I think still valid. And I think the music in that is still, um, still good. It still grips me in the sense. I will say it's a really smooth listen. Like it's a really easy 40 minutes to get through. Like mm-hmm. there are multiple times I was listening to this where it got to the end and I was like, oh shit, we're at the end already. Crazy. Mm. Um, so it does really flow well, but I back you up, it's top heavy. Yeah. Top heavy, top heavy than a motherfucker. Mm. Like those first, I mean it's seven, one through seven, do the heavy lifting. But by that point, you're most likely gripped in that you're like, fine just get me to the end but one three seven do the heavy lifting um definitely so we talked about the themes how how were those themes represented talk to me about you know the songwriting on this that that made those points stick out to you Mm. um the songwriting was good man the songwriting was good and it's it's one of those albums where i don't think they ever like i mean it was the 70s right so it's not shocking but one thing I noticed that they did a lot throughout the album is that they would find essentially what's their hook and that would be the song, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, they're not really straight. They might add, like, a few lines, differences mm-hmm. between hook one and hook two. Yeah. 
but for the most part, that's the song. So it's like they're really getting their message out to you succinctly in like clear as day. Like there's no having to find what they're meaning or the hidden meaning. Actually, yeah, they, no. they, they weren't they weren't giving you 16s. Yeah, they weren't. They really weren't 16s in this. Um in fact, I done I've done them in injustice already. They are there are some meanings where the first few times they went over in my head in terms of I wasn't picking up on some of the things that they were getting at. Even like song one on secondhand news, I'm your secondhand news. Um, you know, just lay me down in tall grass, let me do my thing. Like I was there were some things that were just going over my head, and it's not until you listen to everything beginning to end of a song that the story makes sense. And it it makes sense that that would be the case because in life, if I listen to the two middle sentences that you say without listening to your opening point and your finishing point, then I'm not really going to be able to pick up on what you're talking about for the most part. And that's a lot of that, I think, is the same as in this album. I think if I didn't sit down knowing that we're going to review this album and go literally like listen along whilst I'm reading the lyrics, I think a lot of things would have gone over my head. I think I would have missed out on the story that was being told um, throughout this album as a whole. So there's that, but I think the songwriting is really good. It's really good. The fact that you're even able to pick up pick up on that story, the fact that you're able to like understand that it's different perspectives without knowing at the time. Like I didn't know until you just came in and told me that they were all doing all, all with each other at some point in time. I didn't pick up on that. I just knew that the story that they were telling, there were people who were clearly in a relationship and it was clearly ending. Um, so the fact you're able to get that out of that out of this album without knowing the context of what's going on behind the album means that they've done their job very well. Yeah, similar thoughts, similar thoughts and feelings. I think um, again, they make it really easy for you to pick up on the story. I do think our my I mean our my childhood and you know the settings in which some of their songs played have done their music a disservice because you will think "Don't Stop" is the most upbeat, hearty, optimistic song you've ever heard in your life. Because, mm-hmm. you know, in adverts and in TV, you're only ever hearing that hook. And it's just <laughs> telling you, hey, man, don't start thinking about tomorrow. You know, the sun will come out tomorrow, just like yep. any. But in reality, just... like, when you go to verse three on that, it's like, all I want is to see you smile. If it takes just a little while, I know you don't believe that's true. I never meant any harm to you. Like, he's begging for that forgiveness for what he previously did, mm. which was cheat. V- vigorously. <laughs> with her friend. Yeah. Um, but, like... <laughs> I did a lot of research into these motherfuckers, bro. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man. Black mm-hmm. Twitter ain't got nothing on these niggas. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, like, it was, yeah, it, you, you, it was good songwriting because you get a story, but then it was intricate because, like, you wouldn't pick, like you say, you won't always pick up on things unless you're properly listening. And I think for a lot of people, that would have gone over a lot of heads. I think in, in a lot of, like, the sort of, because obviously I write, I look for sort of reviews to provide some context when I do the intro, for example. And a lot of the reviews really only focus on, like, the sonics of it, of the project. Now, again, that's not surprising because it's rock music, rock pop music in the 70s. We ain't, we ain't out here with, you know what I'm saying? Like, this isn't Scissor. You, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, this isn't some, like, this isn't, you know, the songwriting zenith right so that's not surprising but in doing that you would almost it would almost lead you to believe that it was just all about like catchy hooks and nothing comes through and although like the chain for example is a very catchy hook when you actually listen to the words of the hook with ears of hip-hop fans who all we do is listen to the words Mm -hmm. you actually realize like there's something serious that they're trying to get across if not even if not to us as the fan or the audience then to themselves because mm. if you don't love me now then man. you'll never love me again man i can still hear you singing you won't ever break the check so i've got to be mm. the one to break that cycle i can't man. we can't keep doing this you know there's a there's a great philosopher who once said um how did they put it where am i supposed to go what am mm. I supposed to do? Man. I can't keep on waiting, chasing after you. You know Man. what I'm saying? I have to break that cycle. <laughs> um, and you see that same level of intricate detail woven in here in their songwriting, but it's just done in this 1970s fashion where mm. it's all radio. And so it's like, we need something catchy for people to sing. Yeah. Don't start thinking about tomorrow, but then in my <laughs> verse, I'm going to give you some shit. But my verse is only four bars. 
Like, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so much I can do with four bars. <laughs> Give me four more. <laughs> we might get some diaries, but I, just four bars, it's tough. But what mm. I do think they do really well is the balance between the writing and telling the story and the oxymoron with the production. Because mm. some of that production is very upbeat, whereas the story is very downtrodden. Majority is lit. That's how it is for majority of the album. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a it's a great segue into um the production side of things. What did you think of the production? I thought it was cool. I thought it was very um. I'm a history nerd, as I say often, and so I always love when music or art can transport me back to the time. And so listening to this, I did feel like I was in 1970s America. Mm-hmm. It did just have that post hippie vibe um there was a lot of feel good sentiment po- attempted feel good sentiment that went around in the 70s in, in america especially because you know lsd and on top of that like people were trying to get over many of the traumatic events that happened in the late 60s and you see some of that in the vibe pushed through so like the upbeat nature of don't stop does feel 70s um the sort of country folk pop rock vibe that you get on secondhand news does feel that way um even same with the chain that feels very 1970s american music even though you know they're british american band so it crosses over both um so i i liked that in the sense that i could see exactly where it places in the history and music history scale um it there was nothing crazy about it you know it was very it was it was fine that's why i would say it was fine but from a history buffs perspective it was good to get that snapshot into 1970s music mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, I think the production side of things is probably where I have my biggest gripe with the album. Yeah. Um, not that I have a lot of gripes with the album, but the production side of things definitely stands out. Um, and I don't know, it might be harsh mm-hmm. because I don't know if this was like just what the sound was at the time. It clearly might possibly was because the album did so well. Yeah. But listening to it with my ear today one of the things that i dislike that they do a lot throughout this album is they let the beat breathe a lot even when there's nothing necessarily crazy happening with the beat or when the beat isn't necessarily like amazing Mm -hmm. the drummer's just doing what he was doing 20 seconds ago the guitarist is doing what he was doing 20 seconds ago now that's not the case throughout the whole album there's some places where they let the beat breathe and it's like, oh, this guitarist is like, he's going insane right now. Um, but for the most part, they just let it breathe and nothing changes. Mm-hmm. And then they'll get into their next line and then they'll let it breathe again. And again, nothing changes. And then they'll get into their next line. And there's a lot of that throughout the album. And I think it makes it slower. And because obviously earlier you said it was a very smooth listen. That is where I disagree there are places where it's a smooth listen, but there's also places where it's like, this is dragging and this could be going faster. Do you have examples for me? Um, Not secondhand news, because secondhand news is a very good intro. I would go to, do, 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 let's say a great example is You Make Love and Fun. Okay. You Make Love and Fun is a great example of it. Okay. You have literally, they open it up. The beat is fun already. It's bouncy. Sweet, wonderful you. Massive pause. You make me happy with the things you do. Massive pause. And it's always, they do it so consistently throughout this album. Okay. Where they're just massive pauses, where it's like, there doesn't need to be that big a pause here. <laughs> and it makes it drag. It's like, okay, let's let's move on. Let's move on. And it's not even that, like... It's not that anything about it is bad. It just it makes it drag longer than I think it needs to. Mm-hmm. They let it breathe for longer than I think it needs to. Mm-hmm. And it ruins my enjoyment of the album a bit. It makes things a bit more... It just slows things down where it doesn't need to be slowed down. This group is so crazy. Let me tell you what I just read on Genius right here. Mm-hmm. This song was inspired by Christine McVie's relationship with Curry Grant. Following the split with her husband, the group's bassist, John McVie. So you're telling me this nigga was playing the bass to a song. Where it's... 
These niggas are nasty. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> yeah. yeah, nah, that's my only gripe overall. Um, probably my biggest gripe, but outside of that, well, that and me not liking well, everything after the chain, I wasn't the biggest fan of. Right. I think the chain is the perfect outro. Not to get back to our outro conversation, but the chain should have been the outro. If the chain was the outro to this album, yeah. my feelings towards this album would be completely different. Yeah. You see, I that I'm glad you clarified because I thought you were gonna say the chain, and mm-hmm. I was about to shit on you because that let the manner in which they let it breathe on the chain with the bass just coming in and then crazy. wailing. Chef's crazy, kiss. crazy. Chef's kiss. That's one um, day. That's why I had to make it clear that it's not every song because the chain, there's no flaws in the chain. The chain is a great song. The chain, my only flaw with the chain is that as I'm listening to it, the first few times I listened to it, the story was going completely over my head. <laughs> so all I could see was Rocket and Groot in the gunfight of their life. Yeah. <laughs> like that, for me, it took me a while to take get myself out of, yo, know, this is a soundtrack to Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy and be like, okay, no, this is a song. It was a song first before Marvel came. So let me like really get into what they're trying to get into. But nah, yeah, the chain is a oh, what a song. We've mentioned song a lot. Give me your top three. My top three would be um secondhand news. I really enjoy secondhand news. I like I don't know what it's doing. Is it scatting? Not scatting. I won't call it scatting, but just that dun dun dun. I don't know what he's doing, but I like it. I like <laughs> it. It sounds good to me. <laughs> um, I like the story that they're telling there as well. Um, great opening to the album. Um, I like Go Your Own Way. Mm-hmm. Um, especially with the added context, because the song, as you said earlier, I knew I knew the song. It was one of those songs where it played the first time. I was like, oh, I know this. And then when I actually sat down and really deep what they were saying and what they were talking about. It was like, oh, this is way deeper than I ever thought it was. And I never realized how deep it was because every time I've heard it, it's just been the backing track to a movie or whatever. Yeah. So actually getting to like listen to it in this, with the added context changed my changed what I think about that song, the way I think about that song in general, added to my enjoyment of it. And then number one, unshockingly, is the chain. Um I feel like this whole album exist because of to that give song. the chain <laughs> bam it just needs to give the chain a home yeah you know yeah. it just needs to lie there somewhere in this album just so we can say okay the chain belongs to this album if you if if the argument was top songs of all time and you put the oh, chain in man. there i wouldn't have been man. Man. wouldn't have had a problem <laughs> man it would be like oh fair enough yeah. fair enough that I is see it. yeah bro yeah, like, nah. uh, uh, it's just once that bass. That's my number one. Once that bass cut, once they start sending up, boom, dun, 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 dun. it's so eerie, crazy. It's beautiful, crazy. It's beautiful. It feels like the song's ending, and then it's mm-hmm. like, no, you cut your back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh man, yeah, great, great song. Um, yeah, for me, so in reverse order, a three. I've got God. I got Gold Dust Woman. Okay. Once and that is from doing the contact. So once I realized that that's you know Stevie Nicks, who phenomenal writer, at a different podcast, I'll talk to you all about Stevie Nicks and my love for her. But once I realized that that song was about her battling addiction and cocaine and the gold dust that she's talking about is the white girl, the Miley Cyrus, Alana Del Rey, the Ariana Grande, um, it just took that song to another level for me and her songwriting, which I've always loved, elevated. Um, a two, I got dreams. I really liked Dreams. Again, just the way in which Stevie tells that story, um, tells her feelings about, you know, this tumultuous relationship that they're in. Um, I really appreciate it. And then number one, I mean, we've said it multiple times, it's The Chain. I think that that song is is really special. Like it has really special characteristics from what they're saying, the bass line, the vocals, um once you know that bass line kicks in and then they both wail male and female voices that chain and just hold that for a minute until we close out to the end of that song i think it's brilliant i agree with you this album really exists for the chain to get it mm. shine and i just love that um so that's my three gold dust woman dreams and the chain cool should we take it to the scales it's time man it's time all right the two stubborn nigerian album rankings go as such I hate I ever listened to this. Won't be listened to again. Whole lot of mid. Might stay in rotation for about a week. Pretty damn good. 
serious project and then either me and or Paul can give it our 50% stamp of approval. In the case of which we both give it our 50% stamp of approval, it becomes 100% Two Stubborn Nigerians approved. Paul, what are you ranking this album? I'm going pretty damn good. Mm. I'm going pretty damn good. I like it. I think it's a smooth listen. I think it's good. I can see why the publications gave it the love that it did. And they do. Paul Alabaya wouldn't give it that love mm-hmm. to that extent. And I think, especially because in listening to this album, I've been listening, and I've also been watching American Horror Story Season 3, The Coven, which has Stevie Nicks in it and features a lot of Fleetwood Mac songs that aren't on this album. And I prefer a lot of those songs to a lot of the songs on this album. It's been hard for me to elevate this album any higher than that. I can appreciate where it's good, but I can't say it's, you know, off my lessons anyway, that it's this pantheon great but i can see why all these white led publications would feel that way fair fair um i've been spoken off a cliff i've been spoken off a cliff in this in this just going back and forth today because i was ready to come in here today and give it the whole lot of mid Mm. because i think the high points are super high and the low points don't work for me at all um but i've been spoken off a cliff because i think with the added context of what I now know. Um, I'm being a bit harsh. I think I would give it might stay in rotation for about a week. Okay. Um, again, the parts that don't work for me don't work for me. The parts that do work for me, some of the best, some of the best things I've heard. So in reality, will I go back and listen to the chain again? Most definitely. Will I go back and play the entire album front to back again? Probably not. Probably not. It's probably not happening. Um, that being said, everyone who told me that I was being harsh and that I needed to do my history or my homework when it came to me saying that Fleetwood Mac should not be in top 10, I'm doubling down. I'm doubling. What are you going to do about it? (laughs) It shouldn't have been the top 20. How about that? (laughs) Let's really have a conversation. Um, I get, as you said, I get why people love it. I get why they showed the album love. Fleetwood Mac, given their history, given what I know today, should definitely be shown love. But that being said, this in the, the album, album this ain't the album for it. Yeah. This is the album. I haven't listened to the other albums. Maybe the other albums are better. Mm-hmm. If this is the album that everyone says is their best album, then I can't lie to you. I'm sorry. I can personally name a lot of albums that are better than this, especially seven. At least seven. I can give you seven albums that are better than this off the top of my head right, right. now. E- ESTG dropped seven that are better than this just last Damn. year. <laughs> <laughs> that Kill Bill EP that hey. <laughs> that just dropped. Hey. I don't know. <laughs> Come on now. Have you heard Detroit too? Yeah. <laughs> Power to the people about to do maintenance. Thank you so much for watching that video. If you're feeling it, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Peace. <laughs>